Henry Suso, O.P. also called Amandus, a name adopted in his writings, and Heinrich Suess in German, was a German-Dominican friar and the most popular vernacular writer of the 14th century when considering the number of surviving manuscripts. Suso is thought to have been born on March 21, 1295. An important author in both Latin and Middle High German, he is also notable for defending Meister Eckhart's legacy after Eckhart was posthumously condemned for heresy in 1329. He died in Ulm on 25 January 1366, and was beatified by the Catholic Church in 1831. Biography <inaudible> 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 Suso was born Heinrich von Berg, a member of the ruling family of Berg. He was born in either the free imperial city of Überlingen on Lake Constance or nearby Constance, on 21 March 1295 or perhaps on that date up to 1297-9. Later, out of humility and devotion to his mother, he took her family name, which was Suse or Suse. At 13 years of age he was admitted to the novitiate of the Dominican order at their priory in Constance. After completing that year of probation, he advanced to do his preparatory, philosophical, and theological studies there. In the prologue to his life, Suso recounts how, after about five years in the monastery in other words, when he was about eighteen years old, he experienced a conversion to a deeper form of religious life through the intervention of divine wisdom. He made himself the servant of eternal wisdom which he identified with the divine essence and, in more specific terms, with divine eternal wisdom made woman in Christ. From this point forward in his account of his spiritual life, a burning love for eternal wisdom dominated his thoughts and controlled his actions, his spiritual journey culminated in a mystical marriage to Christ in the form of the eternal wisdom. Topic. Career Suso was then sent on for further studies in philosophy and theology, probably first at the Dominican Monastery in Strasbourg, perhaps between 1319 and 1321, and then from 1324 to 1327 he took a supplementary course in theology in the Dominican Studium Generale in Cologne, where he would have come into contact with Meister Eckhart, and probably also Johannes Thaler, both celebrated mystics, returning to his home priory at Constance in about 1327, Suso was appointed to the office of Lecturer. His teaching, however, aroused criticism, most likely because of his connection with Eckhart in the wake of the latter's trial and condemnation in 1326-9. Suso's Little Book of Truth, a short defense of Eckhart's teaching, probably dates from this time, perhaps 1329. In 1330 this treatise, and another, were denounced as heretical by enemies in the order. Suso traveled to the Dominican general chapter held at Maastricht in 1330 to defend himself. The consequence is not entirely known. At some point between 1329 and 1334, he was removed from his lectureship in Constance, though he was not personally condemned. Knowledge of Suso's activities in subsequent years is somewhat sketchy. It is known that he served as prior of the Constance convent, most likely between 1330 and 1334, though possibly in the 1340s. It is also known that he had various devoted disciples, a group including both men and women, especially those connected to the Friends of God movement. His influence was especially strong in many religious communities of women, particularly in the Dominican monastery of St. Catherinental in the Argo, a famous nursery of mysticism in the 13th and 14th centuries. In the mid-1330s, during his visits to various communities of Dominican nuns and Beguines, Suso became acquainted with Elsbeth Stegel, prioress of the Monastery of Dominican Nuns in Toss. The two became close friends. She translated some of his Latin writings into German, collected and preserved most of his extant letters, and at some point began gathering the materials that Suso eventually put together into his Life of the Servant. Suso shared in the exile of the Dominican community from Constance between 1339 and 1346, during the most heated years of the quarrel between Pope John XXII and the Holy Roman Emperor. He was transferred to the monastery at Ulm in about 1348. He seems to have remained there for the rest of his life. Here, during his final years possibly 1361-3, he edited his four vernacular works into the exemplar. Suso died in Ulm on 25 January 1366. 
Mortifications Early in his life, Suso subjected himself to extreme forms of mortifications, later on he reported that God told him they were unnecessary. During this period, Suso devised for himself several painful devices. Some of these were, an undergarment studded with a hundred and fifty brass nails, a very uncomfortable door to sleep on, and a cross with thirty protruding needles and nails under his body as he slept. In the autobiographical text in which he reports these, however, he ultimately concludes that they are unnecessary distractions from the love of God. Writings Suso and Johannes Thaler were students of Meister Eckhart, forming the nucleus of the Rhineland School of Mysticism. As a lyric poet and troubadour of divine wisdom, Suso explored with psychological intensity the spiritual truths of Eckhart's mystical philosophy. Suso's first work was the Buchlein der Wahrheit, Little Book of Truth, written between 1328 and 1334 in Constance. This was a short defense of the teaching of Meister Eckhart, who had been tried for heresy and condemned in 1328–9. In 1330 this treatise and another possibly the Little Book of Eternal Wisdom were denounced as heretical by Dominican opponents, leading Suso to travel to the Dominican general chapter held at Maastricht in 1330 to defend himself, Suso. S. Next book, Das Buchlein der Uigen Weisheit, The Little Book of Eternal Wisdom, written around 1328 to 1330, is less speculative and more practical. At some point between 1334 and 1337, Suso translated this work into Latin, but in doing so added considerably to its contents and made of it an almost entirely new book, which he called the Horologium Sapientiae, Clock of Wisdom. This book was dedicated to the new Dominican Master General, Hugh of Vossimane, who appears to have been a supporter of his. At some point in the following decades, Stegel formed a collection of 28 of Suso's letters in the Grosses Briefbuch, Great Book of Letters, which survives. Suso also wrote a long text purporting to tell the story of his spiritual life and ascetic practices, variously referred to as the Life of the Servant, Life, Vita, or Leben Siusis, and revised the Buchlein der Wahrheit, and the Buchlein der Uigen Weisheit. At some point in his later years, perhaps 1361-3, he collected these works, together with eleven of his letters the Brebuchlein, or Little Book of Letters, a selection of letters from the Grosses Briefbuch, and a prologue, to form one book he referred to as the Exemplar. There are also various sermons attributed to Suso, although only two appear to be authentic. A treatise known as the Minibuschlein Little Book of Love is sometimes, but probably incorrectly, attributed to Suso. Suso was very widely read in the later Middle Ages. There are 232 extant manuscripts of the Middle High German Little Book of Eternal Wisdom. The Latin Clock of Wisdom was even more popular, over 400 manuscripts in Latin, and over 200 manuscripts in various medieval translations it was translated into eight languages, including Dutch, French, Italian, Swedish, Czech, and English. Many early printings survive as well. The clock was therefore second only to the imitation of Christ in popularity among spiritual writings of the later Middle Ages. Among his many readers and admirers were Thomas A. Kempis and John Fisher, Wolfgang Wackernagel and others have called Suso a minnesinger in prose and in the spiritual order, or a minnesinger of the love of God, both for his use of images and themes from secular, courtly, romantic poetry and for his rich musical vocabulary. The mutual love of God and man which is his principal theme gives warmth and color to his style. He used the full and flexible Alemannic idiom with rare skill, and contributed much to the formation of good German prose, especially by giving new shades of meaning to words employed to describe inner sensations. <laughs> Legacy and veneration in the world Suso was esteemed as a preacher, and was heard in the cities and towns of Swabia, Switzerland, Alsace, and the Netherlands. His apostolate, however, was not with the masses, but rather with individuals of all classes who were drawn to him by his singularly attractive personality, and to whom he became a personal director in the spiritual life. Suso was reported to have established among the Friends of God a society which he called the Brotherhood of the Eternal Wisdom. The so-called rule of the Brotherhood of the Eternal Wisdom is but a free translation of a chapter of his Horologium Sapientiae, and did not make its appearance until the 15th century. 
Suso was beatified in 1831 by Pope Gregory XVI, who assigned 2 March as his feast day, celebrated within the Dominican order. The Dominicans now celebrate his feast on 23 January, the feria, or free day, nearest the day of his death. The words of the Christmas song in Dolce Jubilo are attributed to Suso. Topic. Editions and translations Topic. The Exemplar Middle High German. Henry Suso, Das Buch von dem Diener The Life of the Servant, ed. K. Billmeier, Heinrich Suess. Deutsche Schriften, 1907 translated by Frank Tobin, in the Exemplar, with two German sermons, New York, Paulist Press, 1989, pp. 61-204, Das Buchlein der Ewigen Weisheit The Little Book of Eternal Wisdom, ed. K. Billmeier, Ibid, Trans, in F. Tobin, Ibid, pp. 204-304 Das Buchlein der Wahrheit The Little Book of Truth, ed. K. Billmeier, Ibid, Trans, in F. Tobin, Ibid, pp. 305-332 Das Brebuchlein The Little Book of Letters, ed. K. Billmeier, Ibid, pp. 360-393 Trans, in F. Tobin, Ibid, pp. 333-360 Preaching and Letters Middle High German Henry Suso, The Great Book of Letters, ed. K. Billmeier, Heinrich Suess. Deutsche Schriften, 1907, pp. 405-494 Sermons 1 and 4 those now recognized as authentic are published in English translation in the exemplar, with two German sermons, trans. F. Tobin, New York, Paulist Press, 1989, pp. 361-376, Latin Henry Suso, Horologium Sapientiae, Clock of Wisdom, ed. P. Kunzel, Heinrich Seuss's Horologium Sapientiae, Freiburg, Universitätsverlag, 1977 translated by Edmund College, Wisdom's Watch Upon the Hours, Catholic University of America Press 1994. References Attribution This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, McMahon, Arthur Lawrence 1910. B. L. Henry Suso. In Herbermann, Charles. Catholic Encyclopedia, 7. New York, Robert Appleton. Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Suso, Heinrich. Encyclopedia Britannica. 26 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. Topic further reading topic English, Van Aylst, Jose 2013. Visualizing the Spiritual, Images in the Life and Teachings of Henry Suso c. 1295-1366. In De Hempton, Teresi, Freiters, Virla, Gongora, Maria Eugenia. Speaking to the Eye, Sight and Insight through Text and Image 1150-1650. Breppels. Haas, Alois 1994. Reading Henry Suso. Listening, 29-199-215. Hamburger, Jeffrey The Visual and the Visionary, Art and Female Spirituality in Late Medieval Germany. James, Sarah Rereading Henry Suso and Eucharistic Theology in 15th Century England. The Review of English Studies. 63 732-42. Doi 10.1093 Res HGS 053. Keefer, Richard. 1984. Unquiet Souls: 14th Century Saints and Their Religious Milieu. Chicago, Illinois: University of Chicago Press. McGinn, Bernard. 2005. The Harvest of Mysticism. Pp. 191 to 239. Newman, Barbara. 2003. God and the Goddesses: Vision, Poetry, and Belief in the Middle Ages. University of Pennsylvania Press. Rosensky, Stephen. 2010. Henry Suso's Horologium Sapientiae in 15th Century France. Images of Reading and Writing in Brussels Royal Library MSIV 111. Word and Image, 26, 4, 364 80. doi 10.1080.02666281003603146. Schultz, Dirk. 2005. 
The Seven Points of True Love and Everlasting Wisdom, a Middle English translation of Henry Suso's Horologium Sapientiae, edited from Aberystwyth, National Library of Wales, Brogenden 2.5. Williams Crapp, Werner 2004. Henry Suso's Vita Between Mystagogy and Hagiography. In Mulder Bacher, Annika. Seeing and Knowing, Women and Learning in Medieval Europe, 1200-1550. Breppels. pp. 35-48, German, Filthout, E. M., ed., 1966. Seuss Studien, Heinrich Seuss. Studien Zoom 600. Todestag, 1366-1966, Cologne, Albertus Magnus Verlag Haas, Alois, 1971. Nim din Selby's War. Studien zur Lehre von der Selberkenntnis Bei Meister Eckhart, Johannes Thaler und Heinrich Seuss, Freiburg, Universitätsverlag. Keller, Hildegard Elisabeth and Hamburger, Jeffrey, eds. 2011. Die Stunde des Huns, after Henry Suso's exemplar. Largier, Niklaus. 1999. Der Korper der Schrift, Bild und Text am Beispiel einer Suss Handschrift Day 15. Jarunderts. Mittelalter. Neue Wedge Dirch einen Alten Kontinent, 241-71, Italian, digitized manuscript ca. 1500-25 of the Horologio di Sapienza an Italian translation of the Horologium Sapientiae, digitized codex at Somni. Topic. External links Topic. Quotations related to Henry Suso at Wikiquote Media related to Henry Suso at Wikimedia Commons Henry Suso at Patron Saints Index Henry Suso at Christian Classics Ethereal Library OPVS Research Group Summary of Current Work on Suso